when someone because you mentioned ayurvedic medicine or humor theory um because islamic tradition has a rich um history with um humor theory and how it's applied yes. there's a lot of uh muslims even now talk about it as if it's like backwards theory and it's in the past we have better more um, updated knowledge and, and tech technology in this current day and age so we can discard that um r rubbish nonsense theories yeah. so how would you respond to that yeah i mean that is also the I don't like to speak about people. I always want to speak about structures, but that I think that is the arrogance of our generation and that we just think that we know better than our ancestors, you know, and that's not true. Yes, we have access to some type of technology and you know, access to research, which is built upon cumulative knowledge that has been built upon each other's work for generations. Of course, I'm not denying that we do have access to resources in a way that maybe our ancestors didn't, but nevertheless, it is partially in the nafsani approach of our generation when we say that we know better than our ancestors uh, and the islamic you know uh, you know uh, thought tradition we always say the best generation was the generation of the sahaba the companions of the prophet sallallahu and the salaf and the tabi'in this is the best generations you know we learn from them we try to look at the sanad of the hadith through them you know whether it's sahih or not sahih we believe that these are the greatest generations right so looking today in modernity and say no we're better than them of course not now has knowledge been developed since then of course but it from an islamic point of view it's been developed from these generations and of course all source leads to the prophet sallam, and of course to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to wahi so modernity in its approach has and this is beyond islam has this notion that we don't believe in tradition <laughs> you know we don't believe in tradition we are better than tradition we are going against tradition to be tradition is to be conservative conserve meaning you want to hold on something old we need something new the new is better but is the new better i'm looking at your tv in front of me as an example <laughs> please forgive me brother i love your tv but i i remember when i was young and my father bought the old tv I had it for like 10, 15 years at least. Today you buy a TV because of the, you know, the materialistic mass production that we see where things needs to be cheap and the price needs to be done. It goes, it breaks after two years. Mm -hmm. So even a traditional TV was better. Now look at the traditional arts of Islam or the traditional, you know, craftsmanship of Islam. Uh, the Persian carpet, the Mar Moroccan carpet, as an example, you could have it for hundreds of years. It will not destroy. But go and buy a carpet in Ikea. It will be destroyed within two years. So who says that the new is better than the old? Yeah. Who says that uh, that the new is better than the, uh, the tradition? You know, The tradition had ihsan, beauty into it. And bring it back to humor theory and all these things that you were referring to. Listen, there is hikmah uh, in everything. Even in modernity, I'm not, we as ISIP, you know, as international students of Islamic psychology, myself as a counselor and as an Islamic psychology practitioner, and through the teachings of my beautiful teachers, we're not against modernity in the sense that we're not against new knowledge. We're against modernity's very anthropocentric thing of saying we know better than others. We are the best generation. That is very anthropocentric. That I am against. But if new knowledge comes, that is, you know, according to Quran and Sunnah, we will not disregard it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to seek knowledge, uh, to look at his uh, sign in nature, to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And through them, we will understand parts of, you know, uh, for instance, you know, his, his divine names and attributes we can understand through creation when we do tafakkur and contemplation. Of course, we will never fully understand Allah because Allah is bigger than everything that we know, everything that we see, everything that we hear. But at least we can connect with him through his creation by at least understanding parts of it, how to deal with it. Allah says to us in the Holy Quran that there is, this, uh, you know, remedies for all diseases that are there. And this is also something that the Prophet Sallallahu says, right? For every disease, there is a cure, you know? So, we need to be curious because we know that the disease uh, is something good in it because it might purify you and the cure is out there and Allah has created all of it, right? So curiosity, we're not against. And in that we can learn new knowledge, but to disregard traditional knowledge and say that this is bad or this is not good. Who said that the allopathic medicine is the best? Who said that modern medicine is the best? You know, 
And modern medicine is first and foremost built upon traditional medicine, but they have chemicalized it. But all these ideas of chemicals comes from plants and comes from, you know, herbal, you know, extract that you make chemicals out of it. And the second is that, uh, and in a sense, traditional medicine has been developed in thousands of years of, uh, you know, uh, experimental, you know, knowledge and also in a sense empirical research because uh, the, the Hakim tried the remedy and then learned from it and passed it on and then they tried and they tried and they failed and then they took that and, and, and they learned from generation to generation to generation and they were close to the source, they were close to nature. We're disconnected from nature as modern human beings today. So we think that this pill just comes from nowhere. It's almost like it's magic today. You know, we don't understand where it comes from. Well, these people, the Hakim of our tradition, they were close to nature. They understood the different nuances of nature. And in that sense, they were closer, closer to the source of health than what we are today. They could understand which water is good for you, which leaves you could create tea with. And this allowed them to have understanding of Allah's creation in much better way than what we have, because today we are trying to govern over Allah's creation, including in medical remedies and medical treatments now we're not against uh, surgery brother we're not we're not against even chemical medication if it's needed for instance for ocd patient the subscription is that they sometimes need sris and in combination with talk therapy so we're not against that we're against that that's the only alternative that is presented by modern medicine and then that comes as you were referring all all these you know yunani tib or you know uh, tib uh, you know nabawi or all these traditional medicine in, in, in our islamic tradition but also in other traditions like Ayur, uh, ayurvedic medicine this is nonsense this is no empirical wisdom in it what do you mean why is it nonsense when we see that it has helped so many people? And what is empirical research, by the way? I mean, empirical research is important. It was the Muslims who created empirical research. I mean, even seen uh, all these great, you know, uh, Muslim scientists, they created empirical research. But also, we believe in wahi. <laughs> we believe in the unseen. We believe in revelation. So Imam Ghazali, for instance, he told that empirical research is great in all sciences except the metaphysical sciences. So we believe in something higher and there it will always be always be a friction between us as believers and people that are secular that's just the case but i believe that muslims are the uh, are the bridge between modern medicine and traditional medicine because we actually do believe in empirical research we do believe in the development of medicine we're not in a sense, rejecting science the way that the Judeo-Christian notion has done, or the Catholic Church did historically, at least, uh, by rejecting like scientific research. You know, the whole aspect of accusing Galileo Galileo for being a blasphemist just because he said to the Pope that the world is round, the globe is round and not flat, right? We're not against that. We do believe in science, but we just don't reject who created everything, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we always induce Tawheed. So we need to be firm, brother. We need to tell people that we believe in modern medicine, but we don't believe in it as the only solution. We believe in holistic medicine where modern medicine can have a role, but we have other traditions that also have wisdom. It doesn't mean that all traditional medicine, I'm speaking about other traditions, of course, like Ayurvedic medicine, have the truth either. There are things in other traditional medicine that is not congruent with the Quran and Sunnah and with our epistemological you know, knowledge. Nevertheless, curiosity should be there and uh, we should uh, definitely stand up for a variety of practices uh, according to Quran and Sunnah, inshallah.